Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. If you want to be successful as a reptile breeder, there's quite a few skills you'll need to master in addition to simply knowing how to breed the reptiles. So today I want to go over what I consider to be some of the key skills that you'll need a high level of competence in to be successful in this business. And although learning how to breed reptiles and you know figuring out that aspect can take many, many years of dedication and study, unfortunately that's really just the beginning if you want to be a successful reptile breeder. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more videos on all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. So I figured I'd grab a snake to give you something nice to look at while I'm talking. This is a 2014 holdback female Suriname red tail. She's approaching maturity and I might breed her in the 2021 breeding season. Which brings us to the first skill that's very important for successful boa breeding. And that is photography. So you're going to need to be able to take decent quality photographs that can show a prospective buyer of your snake exactly what the snake looks like. And I've seen a lot of pictures of snakes taken by breeders that are not really that good. And the breeders often will make excuses, but it's really not that hard to learn how to be a good photographer. It just takes some dedication and focus, no pun intended. I would recommend ideally that you have some understanding of photographic theory and that you know what an f-stop is, you know what the shutter speeds are, what an ISO setting is, and the relationships between those three factors uh, when it comes to exposure theory. Uh, ideally, if you can get a camera system like an SLR or a mirrorless camera that allows you to control the settings and allows you to use interchangeable lenses, you'll be able to take some really high quality photographs eventually. That being said, if you're going to use a cell phone camera to take photos, you can still get some really nice photographs. It's just important to understand um, the lighting that you're going to use as well as the composition when it comes to taking snake photographs. Um, one of the best ways to learn composition is simply to study a lot of successful photographs and to try to emulate what you see in those photographs. So when I'm um, putting ads for snakes, I typically will try to get three representative images of each baby, a photograph from the top showing the entire body of the snake, the dorsal surface. I'll do a photo from the side showing the coloration and markings on the side. And then I'll often do a close-up of the head or some other important feature of the snake. In addition, I'll have pictures of the parents available. Um, you know, once you have some good pictures of your breeding stock, you can just continue to use those pictures. You only need to take them uh, one time. I'm often amazed at some of the, the photographs that people are using to try to sell their snakes. I often see pictures that are out of focus or pictures of a snake that you can only see a small part of the body. Often you can't see the head or the tail. Um, and it's kind of strange to expect somebody to send you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of their hard-earned money when they can't even see the snake that they're going to be getting. Uh, it's probably most people would rather set, buy as, as an average looking snake that has a good photograph of it than a really top-notch snake that has a bad photo and they can't even see that, how good the snake is. Um, and you know, one of the things I've noticed is when I'm taking pictures of the babies, often some of them don't turn out as good just because the snake's not cooperating. And people typically are picking in the snakes that have the best pictures of them, not necessarily the best snakes. You know, so again, it's very crucial to have a top quality picture of your snake for a prospective buyer. Um, I'm going to say a lot more in a future video specifically about how to photograph snakes. So please stay tuned for that video sometime in the near future. The second key skill to being a successful reptile breeder is marketing. And with the internet, there's quite a few different websites that you can use to sell your snakes. For example, fauna.com, kingsnake.com, and morphmarket.com are the top three. There's also, of course, Facebook and all the other social media platforms. 
And so when you're marketing snakes, it typically is more effective if you can form relationships with potential buyers years ahead of time. So even before you have any reptiles that you breed, it's really a good idea to take photographs of your breeding stock, get the photos out there, so that people who potentially are interested in that kind of snake can form a relationship with you and you know, hopefully become your online friend. And then when it comes time that you have snake, have babies a few years down the line, um, you, know, they, you know they want those babies and the whole marketing aspect is you know, a piece of cake. The third key skill is customer service. You really want a potential customer to feel comfortable about doing business with you and to not have any concerns about sending you their hard earned money in exchange for your snake. So if a customer asks you questions or asks for additional photos, do your best to provide this information. I often hear people online venting about how annoying it is that certain types of customers that they call tire kickers are just asking for more and more information and never go on to actually purchase a snake. And I've dealt with these types of people. But you have to keep in mind that this is just the necessary part of the reptile business. And for every one of these people, there's also a really dedicated, committed person that you're going to have a very uh, successful uh, business exchange with. So keep that in mind. Um, do your best to provide this additional information as long as it's practical. I mean, you don't have to like provide hundreds of pictures, but if somebody wants more representative pictures of a certain part of the snake, do your best to try to provide it. I mean, it only takes a couple minutes to snap a few photos on your phone and email them to the person. In addition, try to provide as much background information about the uh, ancestry or the parentage of the snake that you can provide. And then once the snake is at the shipped off to the customer, do your best to make sure that the it's a successful transition and that the snake is uh, adjusting to its new home and the, the customer knows exactly how to care for the snake. Um, I've had many excellent transactions with really great breeders that provide me all this information. I've also had some transactions with breeders that provided almost no information and sent, you know, emails that were just, you know, a few words, things like that. A fourth key skill for successful reptile breeding are computer skills, specifically the computer skills that relate to communicating with prospective customers. So you should have a pretty good awareness of all the different platforms online where you can sell reptiles. Um, you should also have a social media presence online on you know, at least a few of the available platforms. These are just really good ways of showing off your breeding stock and keeping people updated on potential litters, as well as showing off the babies once you have them for sale. And then finally in the computer realm, you wanna make sure that you're very adept at communicating with people through email and instant messaging. I changed out the snake. This is a 2015 holdback Peruvian female. She's looking particularly nice today since she just shed. Which brings us to the fifth important skill for reptile breeding, and that's organization. When you're a reptile breeder, you have so much going on. So there's so much that you just have to keep track of. So you're keeping track of the care of your snakes, feeding them at the appropriate schedule, cleaning all their cages, uh, cycling animals for breeding, getting them ready to breed, and then pairing them up, keeping track of the breedings, keeping track of when the uh, mothers are going to be due to give birth, taking care of the babies, etc. Then you have to worry about keeping track of uh, your ads to try to find homes for these animals as well as keeping track of the communications with all of your customers. Often you may have a customer that's paying on a payment plan, so you have to keep track of how much money they paid and how much money they owe. Um, and then when it comes time for shipping, you need to make sure that the, it's not too cold, 
um, you have to keep track of the shipments and make sure that the animals are properly packaged and make it to their destination. You have to make sure that they've made, made it there okay. And all of these activities are in addition to whatever your day job is, assuming you're not a full-time reptile breeder, as well as your family life. You may have other pets. So there's just a huge amount of juggling. Um, so staying organized is really critical if you want to be successful as a reptile breeder. The sixth essential skill is planning. And by planning, I mean on a multi-year level. So an average boa breeding project is a five-year project. So when you consider the time it will take you from raising babies to breeding size and then getting the next generation, you're looking at typically five years. A lot can change in five years. Your personal situation can change. You can move, for example. Uh, the market can change and the type of animal you're working with could be much less popular or much more popular. Um, there's a lot of things that you can't really be sure of. So it's important to look ahead and be considering the five-year view. Uh, five years is a, is a pretty long time you know, for a project. A lot of people can't stick with something for five years. And I think that might be one of the reasons why a lot of people aren't successful with boas is that the time to breed them is a little bit longer than it takes for most um, reptiles. And unfortunately, they don't stick with it for that full five years or something changes that's outside of their control. The seventh key skill set are mechanical and building skills. So you'll need to be able to assemble cages. So even if you buy a commercially available cage, chances are pretty good you're going to have to put it together with a screwdriver and use some tools to do that. You'll need to be able to maintain your heating setups, whether you're using FlexWatt heat tape or some other uh, heating solution, you'll need to be able to attach it to thermostats and make sure the electrical, connect, electrical connections are good and everything's working. And you often might find that there is no commercially available solution for a piece of equipment or a snake cage that you need. So you might need to design your own from scratch and build it yourself to really get the cage or the, the uh, solution that you're looking for. So mechanical skills are key skill set for the successful snake breeder. So the last category I'm going to discuss is kind of a miscellaneous category. And it's really less about specific skill sets as it is more about qualities that make somebody a good reptile breeder. And the first is problem sol solving ability. So when you're breeding reptiles, there's a zillion things that can go wrong. Um, you can basically count on something that you didn't plan on happening is going to happen and many times there's not really a clear solution so you're going to have to be creative sometimes think outside the box and figure out how to get your project back on track the next quality is passion you really should feel a love for what you're doing and really be excited about doing it i think a lot of times people are originally passionate about their breeding projects but then after several years of the grunt work of cleaning snake cages and sometimes dealing with challenging customers, sometimes that passion is just sapped out of them. So if you're in that category and you lose the, the focus and passion, you really have to think about why you're doing this breeding project and what you, know, what, what you hope to get out of it. And hopefully you can figure out a new plan moving forward that's gonna bring back that passion. The third quality is stress relief skills. So reading boas can be very unpredictable. It can be very stressful at times. Unfortunately, there's a lot that's out of your hands and um, sometimes you really don't know how something is gonna work out. Breeding boas is definitely an emotional roller coaster. The highs can be extremely high, but the lows can be just simply miserable. So having a way to unwind and to relieve your stress is very important if you want to be successful in breeding boas. And then finally, the last and certainly not the least quality is persistence. 
as I mentioned earlier, you're looking at a five year window for most boa breeding projects. Five years is, what's the fly? Okay, for, so I'm not gonna edit that out. I just got a fly landed on my face. But five years is a very long time for most people. That's actually longer than it takes most people to get a college degree. My, you know, I got my PhD in under five years. So five years to breed boas is a real long-term project. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, something happens out of their control or they give up, the, they focus after a few years. And I think that's part of the reason why um, there's so few long-term successful boa breeders out there. So that's just some skills for how to be a successful boa breeder. I understand it's nearly impossible for everybody to be good at all these things. So if you're having challenges in a certain area, it often helps to bring in a friend or a coworker who is competent in that area. For example, you might want to have your buddy who has the photographic skills take the pictures of your babies. You might have a wife who has really good social skills online who might do your marketing through a um, social, social network, etc. cetera. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments or you know tips for all the other viewers, I would really appreciate if you would write them below. Thank you for your attention and enjoy your boas.